Some bands, H2K, Kindred, Tom Kinch, Morgana, Rapid Fire, Lulu, GP away from OG. Kindred Tom seems to be an opening on blue side for so many teams right now. They ban out the Morgana, maybe they know Miffy practice it, look at the solo queue, or they just saw last game, hey, maybe the impacts are our, our pick and ban strategies. Lulu Gangplank seems to be the bands of choice on purple side. What's left? There's a Rise. There's a Lissandra, but I don't think either team will value it Poppy very high as well. up yesterday. Poppy, Jundle. Not really ban worthy, but just power picks. Fiora is maybe a power pick. Zed ban now. All right. So that's a bit of a surprise. Are you not really favoring that Zed super recently? LeBlanc is available and with Poppy up and Morgana banned, Poppy's locked in. I was talking to Miffy, it's like, how's your Poppy? He's like, ah, it's not there yet. I need to play against a good Poppy to learn. Well, maybe if they lose right now, they get the opportunity to learn. That's <laughs> something. <laughs> oh. That's next level preparation. Uh, think ahead. Think ahead. Plan ahead. Plan but for I playoffs. Do. You know, I was just play to improve, not oh. for Elo. Well, H2K with that poppy. We are expecting an Evander's hands, especially with the Morgana ban. Mm -hmm. But it is a flex. We've actually seen it top lane in China. Not a big fan of it, but it is a it is a thing that could happen. Yeah, that Morgana ban makes even more sense, just like you said with that poppy first pick, yeah. just denying the black shield. Um, remember, Rexai's tunnel, if amazing, does two slots in. Uh, gets blocked by Poppy Dog. So do Origin play it safe and go for a Lucian here? As the reveal nothing, get I a mean, great ADC that fits every comp, and yeah. it, it looks to be the case. Unless you want to kind of play an inferior laner and play Ezreal, or play a safer laner, not to say inferior, uh, and have a blink that doesn't get cancelled. Uh, Lucian Dash obviously gets interrupted. It just doesn't get his counters as hard as, say, a Kalista does. So securing one of the top two picks here with that Lucian can be a good thing. You just caught a glimpse there of Amazing. He's firing away information. Last second swap to the Elise. He's telling you, I have four abilities in spider form. I have four more. I have the Flash and the Smite. I can use them all. Crepo, you're a smart guy, but that's not what they're talking about. Probably not. No, not, not at this time. For H2K, Yankos, very serious look on his face. Where did they go now? ADC would be the safe one. I mean, Forgiven played Corky yesterday, she doesn't have the poke and siege and zone control. They may go for a uh, Misfortune Poppy too if they just want raw laning power and then group up and siege. I have to remember, yesterday H2K won with a very macro heavy playstyle. They didn't really go for any duels unless necessary. So. Didn't need to, they got so many towers and so much control. Big smiles on the H2K faces. Showing yeah, himself, not feeling the pressure right now. Like, I will show him how to play this. Well. Got the Poppy on their side, so no blocker. the mobility counter's not there. Ryu with the Lissandra, again, flex pick. Could go top, could go middle. Options here for H2K. I feel like it's likely top uh, go either. Yeah, we've seen Lissandra mostly top, because you can really yep. make use of the long lane. Um, just gap close with the claw. Aggressive jungle like Lee Sin can even dash your Lissandra off. She uses her gap close, are a pretty potent combo. I love Lee Sin in this meta. I think he's one of the strongest junglers if Kindred's off the table. So we really want to see what Yankos can do with it in the early game. Yankos is definitely a guy who has consistently been one of the best junglers. 117 yesterday, played Graves. Another aggressive in-your-face champion, but this is yeah. a very different kettle of fish. Yeah, preemptive pickup against the potential misfortune here with the Braum. Because H2K, uh, if you add an MF to that equation, have a very destructive team fight on their hands. So getting something to deny uh, bullet time without actually having to interrupt the misfortune in the Braum shield could be an answer. So there we go, locked in with the rise. So as all Power of Evil yesterday was the Orianna last pick. Power of Evil, it did not pay off against Fnatic. Once we see what HDK round out, they will have the option again to counter pick. Very little wave clear though. This is the same trap that Fnatic fell into. I mean, look at it. Only the culling is reliable wave clear. Otherwise, Rise will have to use ultimate and walk up against this roster. It only takes one flash open with him whoever plays that Lissandra to lock him down and just instantly burst him. So OG will need to stay even in the early game. Else they will get the same fate of H2K's yesterday's opponent. Well, wave clear. Oriana makes wave clear. If they want to go that way. It's so passive though. It is. So H2K, Corky or Misfortune? That seems to be what we're leaning towards here. They want to go for Tower Pusher. Tristana could do well as well. But an abundance of magic damage with a lock-in of both LeBlanc and Corky, so it helps some itemization. Very early to mid-game folks here by H2K. They want to close out this game quickly. Very poor late game. If 
if you can get Rise to the late game here with the protection of a Braum and you get some some Aegis all route up, it's gonna be incredibly hard for HK to then still win team fights because they're looking for picks with LeBlanc, for picks with the uh, Lissandra. Corky just starts pushing his waves, sieging, getting that level six power spike. H2K wanna play quick. Ticking time bomb. For Origin, do they pick something else that scales? It's and too much scale dare yeah. H2K or do they go for something earlier? If this is mid lane, what do they put in here? Mid or top? Definitely need wave clear, so you can't go for like a Cassius and LeBlanc matchup. Oh. So, no wave clear. Yeah, I don't know, man. If it works, it's brilliant. If it fails, it's what? predictively stupid, you know? So, what what has to happen for Origin to make this team comp work? So, PoE needs to show that he plays the matchup incredibly well, for one. We need Amazing to gank and likely assist. And somehow, Forgiven needs to be kept in check because otherwise he can just roam, roam mid and just start sieging that tower. If he, if any of these early towers go down or it ends up in the lane swap, I think H2K will get the advantage by opening up the map and then grouping up and for sieges. I mean, look at the answer for sieges by OG. It's literally hard engage. That's it. And there's very few target hard engages. Only flash snare or a cocoon landing kind of facilitates that. So H2K, lane swap could lead them to victory. I've never heard or said that before. Yeah. Let's see if they can get their hands on the matchups they're looking for. I mean, they can just lane too, by all means. Uh, maybe just lane swap accelerates that early game and just allows them to rotate and, and make picks all over the place on, on a big open map, but... Well, we're about to find out as H2K take on Origin. Every player is talented and every player is smart. I, I think H2K is gonna probably be one of the top three. Let's hope they have a bad day. But I think it will be a really hard game. Well, I'm just going to be happy like performing the way we used to because that's already a good level. You just have to play against them. They can be the top three, yeah? They can be third place, baby. <laughs> Strong words all round. The banners are lit as H2K and Origin take to the rift. Let's see Yanka saying maybe they'll have a bad day. Ryu, his goal was to win LCS last split. That did not work out. You know what the most sad changes was in 524? Players can't forget their trinket anymore. You automatically get a trinket when you walk out of base, so you don't see the you don't see who's nervous. <laughs> As a caster, it was a good indication of a player about to choke if he forgot to buy his trinket. Well, now you just get one for free. Now we'll have to figure it out by watching gameplay. Level one pressure from H2K. Shove their way in. Oh, well, almost. Origin not quick enough to get that ward. So let's see. Is this an indication that H2K are looking for the lane swap or are they just playing for the information? I stopped, I stopped guessing. <laughs> yep. I mean, looking at the matchup, Poppy Corky versus Lucian. Generally, when you judge 2v2s in the bot lane, you check who has double ranged. Well, they both have one range, one melee. They both have good early traders. Lucian Braum is pretty strong at trading and can play around um, Poppy decently well. So I ima imagine Forgiven and Vander would like to swap. But then we need to look at the top lanes. I'm not well versed enough into Lissandra versus Rise. It just seems that Lissandra could AFK push. Uh, and lane swapping on a Rise seems worth more. Delaying the Rise. The price you pay for that in your Lissandra, I think, is worth paying because she still offers good utility in teamfights on limited items. So H2K getting the lane swap off is probably beneficial for them. Now, when H2K did this yesterday, really just set the stage against Giants where they built up a lead that was simply impossible to come back from. The last pick here from Origin was this Cassidy into LeBlanc. We were expecting wave clear. Yep. It did not opt into it. As you can see, the tower pressure will come from both squads. But let's talk about this Cassidy pick because it's going to make or break this game for Origin. Yeah, Cassidy into LeBlanc in an isolated matchup is all about every time she walks up, you got to queue her. If you see a Cassidy start last inning with his queue, he's likely to lose the matchup. Maybe not now, but more so two minutes from now. You always have to trade your queue, for, otherwise you get this, you get harassed. Luckily, the tower shot equates that. But if you greed for a CS now, you will pay the, pay the price, uh, price later once you're out of sustain and you get frozen. Charges on that Corrupting Potion for Power of Evil. Already down in CS from here, as we expect. And we'll see how little he does. We can see that Amazing still in the jungle. Yankos invading. Actually, 
to steal that red buff as well. Yeah, it's the same. They divide the map up in two. They isolate the junglers a little quicker. No long double jungle because obviously experience is more beneficial for junglers because they have the item generating them more experience from camps. We saw Odo Alene get help to level two by the double jungle. Then he passes into the lane, steals as much experience as he can. Push the tower as quickly as you can because you want the wave to bounce back. And H2K take the lead in the lane swap. Odo Alene is the first one to get the experience. Now you have to watch. Do they bounce the way back immediately or do they freeze? Generally, if you want to keep your top laner ahead, he wants to freeze for one or two waves and then push out immediately. A few seconds the difference here between OG and H2K. Oh wow. Spin the last one. Away. Giving that over to Sven. PoE will eat one of those chains. Actually going to share that one. And Soas comes back. So let's see how the lane shakes back out. Look at the difference. Soas, because they're so slow, has to walk back and respect the potential enemies coming in here. He's already setting himself behind. Whereas Oruamne froze for one wave, now pushes in. Yes, that will force Soas or will give Soas a free wave in the top lane. But then Oruamne gets opened up as a resource. So we need to see what he does once this wave pushes out. But it's slowly. He's taking his time. So hopefully Ryze gets spotted in the bot lane right now. Once he gets that information, he can push out because he knows the 2v0 the two v lane from uh, Sven and Mithy are coming top. He can't deal with them. So he just wants to fast push top lane right now. It's all information. The second you know you'll be 1v2, you kind of want to push as quick as you can because you will get denied of this wave. So pushing it as quickly as he could. Now all of a sudden, Odo Wamne really is it. being forced into a position. Not quick enough, Crepo. He could have, he could have ideally, in an ideal scenario, obviously, if he, he worked with perfect information, which is incredibly hard, he could have pushed that for you know, one or two more waves and then backed out. Then went bot and they could have dove rise, for example. And then what would Soaz do? Except for Pride. Wow. Look at him. He's level 2 right now. He's getting zoned by a support who's out-leveling him. So H2K yet again playing the better macro game. Yes, Odoamu could have maybe pushed a little more. But that's nitpicking. Overall, H2K in the lead. And we've seen when Origin fall behind with Soaz, how difficult it is for them to bounce back. Mithy's the only member on the Rift at the moment not running Thunderlords. Got the Bond of Stone. And Origin, despite some pressure on this top tower, keep a close eye on the CS difference. Soaz is down 10. Power of Evil's down roughly 20. Yeah, he's paying the price right now from just not playing the matchup maybe not well enough or just really being better. He does have a gigantic wave. Yeah, but so how's he going to get it? How much of that is going to pick up? That's going to be the challenge, isn't it? Well, it seems because Ryu backs off. Decent enough. No additional pressure from Ryu. He's going to get that Corrupting Potion up. He's replying to the back that Power of Evil has already put mm -hmm. in. Power of Evil working towards that Catalyst. But look at Soas. He's, he's playing Dora the Explorer almost. <laughs> Level 2. <laughs> he dropped the pink ward. He's walking top to a lane. Is that going to bounce? I don't even know. Let me check. That wave is neutral. Slowly going to push up back to him. But the second anybody shows up, he'll have to walk away from that wave again. And he's playing catch up right now. Odoan is already level 4. So this is somewhat what we expected, looking at the team compositions in terms of how the early game could play out and the fact that Soaz and PoE are running double teleports. Yeah, luckily for him, there's a ward in the lane. That's always the, the kind of ward you want to have, like about two screens down from Soas in the top lane at where the tower remains what? are. That's where you want that ward to make sure you don't really get ganged up on. But already, look, Soas is already backing off. He can't even farm. He's so afraid right now. Limited vision in this patch too. And he's getting denied so much by H2K. Oduwamne, he's playing as if nobody's there. Yeah. Because, well, nobody is there. There's no threat for Oduwamne right now. He doesn't care. Farming himself up, continuing to grow his advantage. Uh, I think some props to PoE. He did keep that gap relatively yep. close. Uh, but now the wave is pushing towards Ryu, so that can again extend it. And I think these first teleport plays are going to be so yep. telling for Origin. Teleport plays to counter the siege. And the, level, the things for to watch for H2K is level 6 power spike from Corky. And then by proxy, the, the Triforce power spike and see what Ryu can accomplish in terms of picks. And once Oduwamne gets level 6, you add that teleport into the equation. Remember, H2K are playing an incredibly early oriented uh, team composition origin. See if he didn't get greedy because they're in that brush. Nope. Right, Other bait, bait from Soas. There. Can we go for the overload down bottom? Power of Evil level six to Odo's level five. Rift Walk is gonna go in. Doesn't get the oh, auto attack reset. Yeah. yeah. Not enough burst, and Odo's able to walk away in the middle lane. Yankos and Vanda say, well, we can play the same game. Origin are now forced to defend. Remember, no wave clear, really. Sven doesn't even have access to his ultimate, and Forgiven's got a level advantage. 
Yeah, because Soaz is playing catch up, he's freezing the wave in the top lane, or slowly farming at best. Ven is, is stuck with limited wave clear and relic stacks. That forces power of evil to go back to the mid lane. That gives Oduana breeding room. So it's a trickle down effect. Top lane to mid lane to bot lane. So he's gonna dash forward. Now Power of Evil's made his way back into this middle lane. There's no real fight potential unless they invade very heavily. And is using that passive to get the shield bounce back and forth. The past eight minutes, Forgiven's gonna have the option to pick up the package, give them even more options at fast pushing a tower or creating a scenario that's favorable. Yeah, this is not yet the, the uh, point of power where HK is five. They definitely need their ultis available to make those plays. So was right now is playing catch up. QE pushing that wave into Odo. Yankos is constantly at the side where the action is, whereas Amazing, due to the way his game's playing out, he's kind of farming around Soas, but there's no action there. So, uh, there's not. Dead man Power of Evil, he's stuck around way too Good far. Flash. Rift walk into instant flash. Yankos flash. connects with the Sonic Wave, continues to chase. Red buff is up, but the Rift walk means Power of Evil can continue to run away. We'll take a glimpse in the middle lane as the unbreakable wall will keep Sven alive for a few seconds longer. Power of Evil got the uh, Rift walk back, gets kicked backwards, and kill is secured by the first Blood King. Yeah, and this is exactly what we were talking about. H2K have an early game composition and they're playing the map four against five because due to the way the early macro played out, Soas is playing on an island in the top lane right now and OG is crumbling yet again under the pressure. Falling further and further behind. Soas is going to push this wave forward. Somebody from H2K will catch gigantic, juicy wave of gold. But luckily, Soas has evened out that CS. Does have enough for the Catalyst shortly. Instead, he's going to go tier up and get the Ruby Crystal as well. So, you know, they're playing for the long game, but Origin, they can't afford to keep losing this if they actually want to make it to late game. Yeah, good chase by Yankos too on that kill. Gotta, gotta commend him there. Landed every single Q, and with the red buff, eventually, Power of Evil's ultimate just got too expensive. Couldn't jump out anymore. Ryu did something tricky there. He got one spell blocked by the Braum Shield, tried to flash behind Miffy. Chain Niels there. Niels ended up using both summoners, so did Ryu. So aggressive play. Origin will get themselves a dragon, which is at least something when you consider the amount of pressure yep. and the fact of playing in the back foot. But do they lose position on this mid turret? It doesn't look like. Just the cost of that play is that they give HUK triple lane setup. We'll need to see if it pays off though. Package is available. Forgiven's gonna use it on Amazing, I think. He's coming down the river. He's gonna land on Amazing's head. Oh. Amazing jumps to Vanda before flashing over the wall. Vanda follows suit. There's a knock-up from the wall from Miffy. Now Miffy's in trouble. He flashes defensively. Though Ignite takes down Soaz. And it's Vanda that gets a kill. Oduwan there. He teleports. No, he ran in. He goes down as Fen is dropped. It gets messy at the end. Good job, Miffy. Has not had enough yet. Ryu's looking around the side. Ryu may want to dash in. Distortion, there's about half of a mana bar available and Power of Evil can make his way out. H2K trade kills and they get a tower as well. So there's a lot to say about that entire exchange. One, from a macro point of view, Origin's time they spent taking the dragon gave H2K triple lane setup that led to that play. Then looking at the play itself, a couple of nice things there. Miffy juking out that last kick. Yanko's trying to set up the pinball kick, really good. Vanner flashy was good, but missed the wall, kinda. But then the AoE effect from the level 7 with Sandra, you could definitely see the strengths and weaknesses and what goes well and what went wrong in that exchange. But overall, because the macro made sense for H2K, regardless if the play went super well, well, medium well, they still get a tower. Medium well's my favorite well. I'm H2K are gonna look for rare. more Crypto. I prefer medium rare, man. Amazing's gonna try and get away. Vanda does not find the stun against the wall, gets the hammer shock slow. Soaz will luckily be able to get away from that. Vanda just millimeters from finding another kill for H2K. Yep. Power of Evil trying to catch up, but every time they push up the lane and they want to get that last extra wave, they're already they're already called back on wave clear duty because the, the remaining parts of the map can't play 4v5, and that's the strength of this H2K pressure and early game composition. Yeah, the limited wave clear from Origin, despite the fact they'll have numbers. It's Basically going to be on Sven's culling. Now Ryu, he could get jumped in. Look at this. Teleport coming down from Origin. Ryu is the target. He does not have flash. He's going to distort forward. The clone comes out and Power of Evil gets booted away. Vanda saving Ryu's life. We need Gandalf Poppy. <laughs> you shall not pass. 
Oh, I love that ability. It just looks phenomenal. Yeah, I thought he was I thought he was a goner, but he just walked straight into the help of Poppy Ultimate. And that's so that's a tilter as well. Like if you don't get a kill because you miss a skill shot, maybe. If you just get knocked away by a giant puppy hammer, that will upset you. Well, we heard in the feature from Power of Evil. Even if he plays bad, I think Peke will forgive him. This was at IEM, so a long time ago. Maybe he's not allowed to play bad anymore. We'll have to get an update on that question. But he's got that rod completed, finally. Still down 20 CS. And that was one of the answers, though, the teleport play. That's what you do if you get sieged upon. It's a hard engage, it's a flank, it's a teleport from behind. Again, just like split push, you need it. You need to stop it before it's happening, because once everything's in motion, whatever move you make leaves you uh, with a weak flank. If you go top, you know, they take the bottom tower. If you go too late, they already get the damage on the tower. You won't get much, so you got to nip it in the bud. Very hard. Failed attempt there for OG. And that's a problem, because OG are continuing to fall further behind. So now it's going to be up to Soaz. He doesn't even have single item completed yet. He's sitting around 800 gold, so he's going to work his way up. HK is playing on a timer though. There's still plenty of time. I think this composition kind of runs out, run out runs out of steam if the game's even at maybe like 28, 30 minutes. So most games have ended at like 25, 26 minutes. So in terms of a timing perspective, they're fine. Yeah. All depends on the Baron that they will eventually need to get to close out the game. How difficult it's gonna be for OG to actually face check a Corky LeBlanc Lissandra. Next package will be big too from Forgiven. And always generate plays. And it used it very effectively on Amazing earlier in the match. Big Shot is smiling because I said that Forgiven's package was big. It's a little inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't need to be repeated. But yes, I became a child for a few seconds again. H2K are grouping up in the middle lane, Crepo. Clearing out any of the wards that Origin had placed. And there's right. the culling. This is the yep. wave clear to at least towards some of the momentum. With those wards down, it also limits the flanking potential for Soaz. Yeah, see, H2K, don't HC, they don't care if the siege fails because right now all they need to do is wait for those massive waves to push in, pick up the goal, and do, do it again. It does cost them some time, but meanwhile, they're, contest they're always contesting something. A siege, a farm, a blue buff right now. So they're constantly proactively doing something on the map. OG have been reacting pretty much since minute one. Let's see how H2K respond. They're clearing out almost all the vision in this bottom half of the map just until OG push back in, but OG have got a decent line of wards in the top half, so HCK will have to invest some pinks or sweepers if they pick them up. Just need to keep the waves pushing. Sometimes it's hard to 1-3-1 to one one efficiently this early in the game because there's always one guy that wants to base. You know, you tell him you don't need the item, he'll be like, yes, I do. <laughs> I need more AP, even though I don't play against an opponent, I still need more AP. Gotta spend and then that you're gold. Gotta spend that gold. And then your 1-3-1 one one kind of falls apart because you need continuous pressure. The main reason why, because if one part gets engaged upon, you need to capitalize on the other side of the map. Well, the power difference between Sven and Forgiven is monumental. Trinity Force plus Sork Shoes versus just the Essence Reaper. Mm. Power of Evil is going to get challenged here by Ryu. Actually, trades back and forth. Ryu will chain him down. He comes out relatively even, and the package is up for Forgiven. So next time he backs, uh, sitting on around 800 gold. Yeah, HK. item and move around quickly. They really need to break up on one of these tier 1 towers. Generally by pushing, there's a split push where you push and siege every lane, or you push all lanes and then collapse in the mid lane. That used to be HGK's favorite strategy. Origin are setting up to get a lot stronger in the team fights though. They're not looking to collapse themselves. No, not yet. Teleport is still available for Soaz. The tower is dropped. Amazing's retreating, and Soaz is TPing onto a minion line. Odo One has gone low, and there's a boot away, but it's only on Miffy. It may not matter. They've got a kill onto Odo One there, and OG want more. The king of chasing, Power of Evil, with Rift War. Flash forward from Soaz. He prisons Vander in place. Power of Evil's looking to get the kill, and he will find it. Ryu jumps in from the flank and drops Soaz where he stands before he backs away safely and OG, they get themselves some kills. Yeah, and this is what we didn't see from H2K yesterday is it's the greed. They didn't have to go for that dive. They exact they saw members in the top lane and the bottom lane and they assumed they could clean cleanly take a dive 5v3. They didn't think about the exhaust that came out from Mithy and the teleport and just how quick power you could join that fight. Look at at this point, disengage and you're fine. But right now Odo goes in, instant reaction teleport. This time Soaz is finally teleporting. Power of Evil comes in, Vandal tries to disengage, which is good. Pick up one kill, and then just keep your eyes on Ryu. Fantastic move here from Ryu and Yankos to actually even out this one-for-one -one trade. So OG read themselves a little bit trying to catch up, because they get a support, but they lose Soaz. Uh, great positional play from Ryu. 
Yep, fantastic combo there. And just to make it a one for two, but Origin get the second dragon of the game. So something else again, just to keep them a little bit in there. Yeah, more importantly, the for HDK, they got the tier one tower mid, which means they can just push it a little farther and then rotate to the, one of these side towers. It's incredibly hard to open up the first tier one tower, but it's so much easier to get the second and a third because it just allows for rotations. Okay, gotta be a little careful. Origin still got some defensive pinks. Actually got relatively deep river wards, considering how defensive they've been playing. Yeah. Well, they just got the deep wards for the, the dragon. HGK was based, yeah. but th they don't serve any purpose, you know. All they see tell you is that there's nobody around the dragon pit. Well, yeah, there's no dragon. Nice wards. Blue trinkets only two on the side of Origin, one for HDK. See if they start deciding to change those. And for HDK. But this is a trend we've seen. Winning map teams don't need blue trinkets because they just want to leave uh, invisible wards in the enemy jungle. So when the jung when the enemy walks out to contest an objective, so when you strike, especially you have like champions like Ryu here or champions like LeBlanc here on Ryu. Yeah. Ryu gets a big chunk out of Soaz. He used his teleport in their last fight. Power of Evil has his available, which is why he's uh, pushing down bottom. And Mithy, he's gone in with the Glacial Fisher. They've set their sights on Vander, and I think he will be sacrificial. But now HCK want to re-engage. Teleports come in from Power of Evil. Both supports are down. It's a four on four, all damage. Power of Evil's got a full mana bar as well. He's gonna get the pulse, but he gets locked down by the tomb and sent to the grave. Now HCK in a 4v3 are chasing Origin. So has got chunked out low early and Sonic Wave missing means nothing more happens. The same thing again. Origin react on a push. Do something great. Overchase. Get turned on by the HDK. Really good turn there if I already want. More importantly, they get the tower again. Origin could have went back there and held. Oas. Oh, the chain just missed. One or two more auto attacks. Flash forward. Sonic Wave. Caught Bloody by luck. Amazing. Yankos wanted that. But this is a good adaptation from Origin. Yesterday, they weren't really doing anything until it was too late. This time, they engaged before the siege was set in motion. They still had the Lissandra mid. They went for the hardcore team fight right there. That's what they had to do. They found a pick, but then they overchased. Look Ooh. at Ben taking damage to him. Well, it's getting scarier and scarier. Wow, Ryu's not done. He's gone forward. Ignite is ticking, and I think Spen's going down. Ryu is trying to run away. The Ooh. clone! <laughs> the clone! Saving Ryu, I think. There's not a lot of damage to follow up, but Ryu, he finds his man. That's when your fingers just slightly hover over out there for. <laughs> no, no, don't do it. Yeah, that's, uh, that just hurts. Yeah. Well played by Ryu. Exceptionally well played. 3-0-1 on that LeBlanc. As we've hit 20 minutes, 6, 000, uh, 5 thousand gold lead. Yep. And Forage and both of their two big sort of keep me in this game mechanics of teleports have Kind of failed. Yeah, they failed. So they have two teleports available. One on a very long cooldown now. Second one from Soa is about to come up. ACK have learned that Orange now is not afraid to pull the trigger. So they'll proceed with a little more caution. OG can use that to their advantage by kind of faking the engage too. Uh, in terms of mind games. But the raw power sits on the side of ACK. You've seen with such ease or with what ease they can push up all these lanes. All it takes is the next step where they disappear and move into the Baron area. D ward and suddenly OG is set in front of an impossible decision. Do we face check? Are they doing it? What do we do? Yeah. Probably get caught, probably leave the Baron, HDK finish the game. That's the likely outcome right here. Unless they can find one opening somewhere. Let's find out if H2K present any openings. They've grouped up in this bottom lane and going to be taking down the inhibitor turret. Engage over the side from Moto 1. He's rooted them in place. Self cast on the tomb. Tower is still standing, and H2K want the dive. They've got themselves a kill onto a Mithy, and there's a boot away onto Sven's culling. But H2K now the numbers advantage for the next 25 seconds. Look to re siege this tower. Yeah, look at Power of Evil. They have no way to clear. So if Origin stays, they want to fight. Power of Evil is the main force in this fight. Was. Was the main force. No fight. Ryu sent him packing, and H2K get a kill and a tower. So well executed. Yeah, all these, and you see how quickly those tier one towers start falling off when the first one gets down. That's a little rough one. Look at what I'm here. Nobody thinks he's actually gonna proc that uh, E there, but just instantly goes in with the tomb. And at that point, all the all the crowd control effects are being used defensively from Origin. And if they don't net a kill, it's over because HDK don't need their ultimates in the fight because they can always repeat the siege. Origin need them to lock them down and win the fight. That's the difference. You're playing siege versus. Engage team fight. 
Well, Origin, support staff backstage, Pekka and Hazel. I mean, it's the, uh, they're victims of their own draft right here. They played a risky game with double scaling mid and top in a meta that promotes early game aggression. We've seen games finish at 25, 26, 27 minutes. The earliest I can recall is maybe like from a decent close game is 34. Picking champions like Captain Risky. and Rise at the same time is almost disrespectful. Risky and it has not worked so far. H2K pushed Origin all the way back to the inhibitor turrets. H2K will get their first taste of Dragon. That's going to be useful now, plus 6%. This may actually prompt the return of Victor as a mid lane pick. Just for the... Did he well, not the, not the return, okay. Yeah. The return to a, a higher tier pick, just for the wave clear. It seems that a lot of these plays that these teams are making just get stopped by wave clear. Just point and click. And Nivea, she's too slow to rotate. But. Hey, that was like the primary mid of all star. Yeah, she scales pretty slowly though. Yeah, yeah Victor, maybe... There's some instances where Lux is played, but she's also very conditional. Saw her a couple times in LCK earlier this week. Yeah, same thing. Get those uh, chili ghosts down. Yeah, I think it was Fly. And, uh, and a light binding, but yeah, as it stands, H2K starting to re-siege. Forgiven, this big package flying up this middle lane. H2K sniffing around opportunities. Yeah. If they set up Vision, they can set up a good Baron. Oh, they're not even going to need it. Oh, no, I'm going to get caught by a good Cocoon, but Amazing's in trouble. Three members of each team are uh, fighting in this middle lane. The Fisher comes out, and Sven is stunned against the wall. Vanders found his man, and Forgiven sent him packing. That's a double kill. Yankos is continuing the chase. He's looking for Amazing. Follows the resonating strike. Oh, no, I'm there. Flashes and roots him in place. Three easy kills. And that's the problem. Or Origins carries are in the side lanes, farming up, and they can't deal with the lack of vision in the mid lane. Oduwamu comes out of the blue, even gets his E predicted with a cocoon, but there's no follow damage, no teleport from Soas. He was just watching that play, so something is going wrong from Origin as a whole. Ryu, in zone of power of evil. This will be Baron, likely push. The same scenario we've seen right now will just happen in double time. And a pause. Well, H2K. <laughs> Why is my screen gray? Well, <laughs> hate to break it to you, man. You got flying by Poppy. Why didn't my dash not work? Well, Poppy. Well, that is the question. No, we will find out no. shortly why, why the pause has actually happened. But I think all praise to H2K. Yeah. Yesterday, they played a calm, controlled, patient tower game. Today, somewhat the same with a few tower dives, but... I like the, the difference in Corky. Unforgiven. So usually when he was playing Corky in Gambit, it was because Gambit wanted to play, to my sense at least, around maybe Cavashard in the top lane, and it was just like a wave clear to carry. You yeah. know what? You sit in your lane, go even, because it's really hard to, in that meta at least, I'll play with Corky, because if any fight you do, you get teleported around. Here in H2K, he's like leading the split push, and he's leading the siege at least. He's a sieging AD carry, he's supported by some really high damage burst mages, they have so much zone in their top and mid. So he can orchestrate and really weave in those auto attacks. We saw in that one mid lane fight that broke out where uh, Vander flashed over the wall, just how smart he is as a player because many Corkies there would have retreated. He went around, got a kill, Val Valkyrie out with a 600 range Valkyrie. Then Yankos came in for the support. So he seems very comfortable in this H2K framework. Yeah, and the whole team does really. Yeah. Every single member's strength seems to be shining. Uh, I have heard that it is a user interface Problem on the side of Sven, as you can see. We've got some text there. Uh, Grayscale screen, not something he's used to seeing very yep. often. Uh, but all jokes aside, we will get that resolved shortly. And, and with this Baron being picked up, yes, okay, Origin of two teleports, but they, they have to find HTK out of position. HTK have yeah. to make a mistake in the setup to now lose this game. They have to make a mistake and set up something they haven't really done this entire game. There's been two instances where maybe could have gotten caught, and they still outplayed their way out of it, especially with Poppy ulti. It's rough. It really, really is. We mentioned at uh, the beginning of the show yesterday that HTK, when you look at some of the support stuff that they've picked up, uh, Ispa, the former yep. manager from Fnatic, he joined the team, probably returns as coach. Obviously, all the players have changed. You know, they've come out the gate swinging, so and, and they've sent a big message to the whole European LCS. Yeah, I don't know the inner workings of H2K, so I just... We're running, out of tangent, uh, running off of tangents here on just what we see, but it does seem that probably um, 
made H2K last year into a good macro team, and already right now, this team is playing a very, very good macro style game, even though they have members coming from Rocket with Jankos and Vander, they have Forgiven, who has cycled through many teams in the LCS and had to drastically change his play style overall. So it does seem that this has a probably feel to me, where you're like, nope, don't fight unless you have to. <laughs> play, play the tower. Get the tower. If you get the tower, then you get the fight. It's like he a bonus reward, you know? He was bragging about how few kills HTK picked up in their win yesterday uh, on, on Twitter. And it's one of those things that we talked about a lot. Like, was it Crawley? Was it Kissing that made HTK good in summer? And I guess we're going to find... Baron goes down! Valentina HTK. Yeah, Baron is secured. So no one's real surprise. I'm to play my play though. You could. I think you could. If I learn English, yeah. <laughs> Your Anyways. blunder is very good. Yeah. But um, now we see how they set up and how they actually push with this Baron. Like yep. you said, vision, make sure they cover their flanks. So look for Power of Evil and so as to hide in the brush and catch a, strangle, uh, a stranger or, or some somebody that's left behind trying to push a wave. That's pretty much the only counterplay at this point. But even then, the jungle is a little bit rewards. They're all basing right now, so which gives the map to H2K. All they need to do is push some lanes. Look at how spread out they are, though. Like Oduwamne all the way in the top lane. This is where usually you would see teams just panic hide in the brush and hope that somebody passes by you and you get to engage them from behind. But if that fails at any point and you're spotted, the game's instantly over because you're not even wave clear and with your limited wave clear. So it's such a risky strategy. Yeah, when you're this far down, everything's risky. Yep. No matter what you decide to do. So they're not even going for 1-3-1. One, one. They're comfortable just playing 4-1 with Cabochard in the top lane, hoping that he can put the one-man pressure up, or they can just threaten to dive with teleport. Yeah. TP on a minion. Doesn't matter. He can find his way into a fight if it's needed. But with the sizable lead they have and the team fight power of Poppy, so they got a, even a 4v5 can work. Yeah, they got amazing top. Odo went mid, so it's still a 4v4. The siege zone from Poppy as well. You can just remove the one instance of wave clear by threatening to use your ulti. While tower has already gone down, Vander was swinging that hammer, but he did not find a target or anyone to land it on. Look at the poke. That is what you want in this metagame. You want wave clear, and what is wave clear very often? It is good poke. OG can't even begin thinking about a fight right now. Oduan is still in the middle lane, by the way. We don't even know what that tower is at. Probably half HP. There we go, half HP. That one's down. The base is in shambles, and Origin missed their chance to strike in the setup, and they're paying the price right now. They really, really are. Death, sent uh, death sentence on the hooks here for OG, as Mithy is going to be jumping backwards. Does have the hammer available to him. We'll see if the verdict is a win for H2K. Inhibitor is now going to be the focus. The rest of the members grouping themselves up. And look at the minions in the top lane. The moment H2K take this inhibitor, they can peel away top. Ryu gets caught by a cocoon and spin is burst out very, very low. So as flashes defensively, but H2K forgiven is unstoppable. Mythi gets booted backwards by Yankost and delivered to the waiting hands of Ryu. The power of Evil is forced to run with the nether blade between his legs, unable to impact the fight. The Nexus turret will be going down shortly as the minions are conga lining their way in. Supers are chasing Ryu, double dash dunk. Finds a kill on to Sven. Power of Evil's trying to get away with the Rift Walk, and that's all he can do as a double kill for Ryu. It's not done yet. Power of Evil finds a double kill back before Forgiven shuts him down. And H2K go 2 0 in week one. Do you think that hurts? Running away with Silencing a blade. Silencing the crowd. Swing your legs. That is the important question I have for this. Emphatic. Game. Emphatic win. Yeah. Now beautifully played play by HGK. I mean, it, it was in the making. The, oh the result, God, yeah, we can see this from pretty much 5, 10, even 15 years ago, all through composition, and more importantly, in execution. H2K drafted a composition, used it to play to their strengths, and yeah, they left very little options for Origin. That's what I usually like seeing when a team comes in with a strategy, and they remove almost every single instance of counterplay. They tell you everything you're going to do will be predictable or has to be so crazy, chaotic, random that you likely don't have the guts to do it on the LCS stage. That well, was great to see. They're amazing and forgiven. Obviously a bit of a hug. On the Copenhagen Wolves back in the day. Long time ago now, actually. Back and in Maddie. 608 for Forgiven's Corky. But really, it's a team victory. Everybody was in the right place at the right time and for 